Hey everybody and welcome to part 4 of my analysis of the 2022 EUCF final between Clapham and Ranala. In this part we're going to look at the final few points of the game. We were going to look at some conclusions in this video but it ended up being 12 minutes long anyway. So we're going to save the conclusions to properly do it in part 5. We start off with an offside call from Clapham against Ranala. It's a pretty strict call. You can see that Ranala aren't... Like if they are over the line, I'm not 100% sure where this line is, I've kind of estimated it, but if they are over the line, it's only by a step, maybe two. Um, and this actually could be like a revenge call for Ranala calling offside at 6-3 here, where there's only one player that's like just offside hovering over the line. But how strict should we be with offside calls? Personally, I think if it's one or two steps, then don't call it. But anything more than that, it's okay to call it. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, Clapham make the offside call, and so the disc gets bricked. Ranala immediately calls problems for Clapham, poaching off the reset Hillman here to force the disc to go backwards. And then Hillman doesn't opt to pass immediately back to Mead for the quick give-go attack over to the near sideline and said the defenders switch and managed to neutralize both Clapham's set play and them starting any flow off the first pass. There's Nightmare downfield as two Clapham cutters move at the same time, pull out of the cut and then move again at the same time. Eventually Ollie Gordon changes direction and offers quite a shallow angle which opens up the window for the defender to come in and bid. Ollie's able to attack the disc but he's getting it moving backwards towards his end zone and towards the sideline. The force from Ranola in this point is unclear. Sometimes it looks like they're forcing back to where the disc came. Sometimes it looks like it's middle. Sometimes it looks like they're forcing to the near sideline, but away from the sideline when Clapham are on this near sideline. Justin does a nice give go to get the disc moving forward. Uh, Clapham string together 12 passes in this possession. At this point, Meade has the opportunity to fall out of his throw and go for a return pass, but Clapham's shape is looking okay, and this actually sets up a series of nice flow passes. Very tight and intense for Clapham. McHale has the disc back, marked by Keenan. McHale gets it, hits Ashio, who can throw to Meade, who's directly in front of him, and the disc keeps moving. There's a little bit of hitch in the flow at this point, and the turnover follows. The problem starts at this moment when Meade isn't accelerating out of his throw, looking for the disc back in his hands, even though McNulty is out of position. So both McHale and Meade should be thinking about getting the disc back to Meade, preferably in this space in front of the disc, so Meade can get it moving laterally either across or even downfield towards the end zone with the defenders out of position. Instead, Meade looks downfield, McHale catches the disc and looks over for a swing, and then Meade realises that he's free and is able to cut across. However, they're not looking for the immediate short lefty backhand here. Instead, Meade attacks the space directly behind the force. The force steps over, adds more pressure, and Ollie Gordon isn't able to make the catch. You can see Ronald's pressure rising as If we look again, we can see it's likely that McHale sees Gordon when he looks over the shoulder of the force and makes a late decision to extend the pass. Gordon sees Meade's cut late and he pulls out, but he still very almost gets the disc. If he hadn't have cut at all, then Meade would have likely been passed to, and if he had followed through with this cut, then he would have had the disc easily. There are similarities with this to the turnover in the last point. This time, Yo cut across for McHale, who scans the space and notices Gordon late, making a late adjustment to the throw, which ends up popping over Gordon. These turnovers look like unforced throwing errors, but they're actually symptoms of an out of sync offense with Gordon looking for the continuation flow passes, like dump and swing, like traditional, and Yo looking for the immediate return passes, with Meade and McHale with slight delays to their return passes, leading them to get caught in two minds with their throws. A little bit too much edge on that throw. If we look again at this 12 pass possession with the force in mind, Ranala seems to be forcing straight up on the far side, almost forcing back then towards that far sideline. Now it's starting to look like it is probably like a middle force, but then the disc comes over here and it gets forced back across. At this point, the disc is gonna be forced across and now you're expecting the disc to continue to be forced across, but it's forced back towards this line. And that, that probably puts unexpected pressure on the throw. With that in mind, this force really doesn't make any sense 
Unless it's something to do with when the disc is passed off the line, it gets forced back towards that line. But it could just be a mistake from any of the players. In this situation, Mead has Ford, and as he releases the disc here, he's actually free to get a return pass directly in front of Ford, and it would be an easy, uncontested pass, getting the disc moving forward. But instead, he decides to clear round to the break side. This is just an opportunity for some easy flow, getting the disc moving forward, looking for those immediate return passes, which seems to be a gap in Meade's skill set as it then affects the subsequent two passes he makes as well, ultimately contributing to the turnover. Randall is set up in their vertical cluster and Clapham are just marking really tight one-to-one. -one. Rogers pushes off forward here to get free, um, but the disc stays with him. And then he holds onto the disc for 7.1 seconds. Hillman switches to cover the obvious open undercut. And this takes Rogers' attention because then he looks to Murphy, who Hillman was previously marking. Normally this player gets free or is free, but Ashio does a great job of reacting quickly to the switch and closing up Murphy, stopping the immediate option and the second look, which all eats up valuable seconds for Rogers, who has a bad case of zone eyes here, doesn't look at the reset, and nice it to the end zone, but McHale has it covered. And he's forced to put up a massive blade. The only person really near it was McHale. On Randler's defense, Murphy switches twice. The first time is good. The second time, Briggs could throw to Yo, but he fakes it instead. Not a very believable fake. And he needs to hit Gordon with a hammer in order to cash fully in on this fake. Have him work the disc around patiently. Their shape isn't too bad and that leads to some good flow now Ford, down the line yo he's right in front of the end zone this has been that calm casual play that clapham do oh so well the break back to ford ford mead gets the disc off a dump swing and seemingly just turfs it completely unforced if we look again we can see that some credit is due to stewart for fanning out wide and turning the heat up at the right moment to force Meade to slightly adjust his throw. If he just threw a normal backhand like he's originally intending to, then Stewart has a chance of getting it. Again, Randler have set up in their vert, and Clapham are doing tight one-to-one. -one. There's a pick, which is kind of inconsequential. Briggs and Yo switch to cover the deep and cover the under. And once again, we can see McNamara opening up the field for Randler by popping lefty backhands between the defenders. The turnover in the end isn't a bad look. It's just uh, it doesn't have enough touch on it and fades away. Clavin put the disc up and score in seven passes. They go back to the big guns, Justin Ford hucking to Ashley Yo to put this point away. Kind of lucky to hold on to it after turning over twice and Randall having a couple of shots to the end zone. Yo does really well on this box out to not give a chance to the defense. Masterfully done. Shepherds McNamara towards the sideline before turning back into Hillman switches after the third pass by Ranler and this causes Rogers to hold on to the disc for a long time. He actually keeps it in his hands for nine seconds before throwing to this wrinkle cut from Feely. Magnus Wilson does not switch during this point and that leaves the Clapham defense in disarray. Ford does, and this leaves Bogan Carey free in the middle. The pass goes to the far sideline, and it's just in. Murphy's going to get there. He has to toe the line again. Again, Rogers holds onto the disc for over nine seconds. Looks like Felix Martin and Justin Ford are going to buzz switch, but that gets cancelled as the cut doesn't follow through. A good kind of tight D from Clapham downfield. Uh, Rogers eventually gets the disc off to Feely, and there's a buzz switch, but... Felix Martin reacts very late to it. Feely doesn't punish this by giving and going. Instead, he squeezes it through to McNamara, who then squeezes it through to Rogers. Ranala take the lead and get to match point 14-13. One point away from a European title. Clapham are feeling the pressure right now. Even though they're in this situation, as the pool comes in, Ranala managed to stop the first pass, which is nuts considering all seven players are free on Clapham right now. Long lets the pool drop to the floor, which I don't think is a big deal, providing your offense has enough options to just get the disc moving anyway. But there's a little bit too much focus on Meade getting free and not enough support for other players. Abrams doesn't look ready. There are inactive and disconnected players, and the disc is surrounded. 
Uh, Long actually gets blindsided when he goes for this throw and has to adjust it to go up high. It's too high for Meade and Ranala get a turn without Clapham even completing a pass. Ranala gives the disc back though on this simple undercut. It slips through Stewart's hands and doinks Briggs on the head. So Clapham gets a second chance. Yo initiates good flow of this fairly innocuous lateral pass by hitting the immediate return pass and forcing Ranala to buzz switch to cover it. Yo has also been phenomenal all game long. Gordon pivots through this contact to throw up line to Mead. And then Adrian's cut is well timed and diagonally away from the sideline. Mead's throw curves nicely over to the deep far side of the end zone for the score. This brings us to Universe Point in the European final. Get much bigger than this. Universe Point starts with another offside call. Now we don't have the perfect camera angle, but we can see that it's not very offside if it is offside. Perhaps McHale's foot's on the line, but these offside calls seem harsh to me and quite a cheap way of getting a bricked pull start. So let us know in the comments how strict do you think teams should be with this. McHale and Hillman instantly poach off to force the disc to go backwards and then buzz switch when Rogers runs through. Big spaces are opening up on the field. Feely puts the disc into one of these spaces and McNamara and Ford battle. A heroic catch from McNamara, but Ford calls foul. There's consternation sweeping across the pitch. I think the call here is that Ford feels like he was pushed out of position early on in this move, but McNamara looks like he's pretty much just holding his ground and makes this heroic catch to really save the game. It looks like Ford reads the play very early, and it's possible that McNamara puts his right arm out when he notices this, but we can't really ever know for sure. This stays with Randler and gets sent back to the thrower. Hillman poaches across, which is well timed, could result in a turnover if the thrower doesn't spot it. And there's a rounding the corner travel made here by Orcock on Bogan Carey, which is fair enough. And we see Rogers here accelerating out of his throw, and then pivoting inwards after catching. This really opens up the field. Rogers does another push-off foul like the one he did a few points ago. Uh, McHale calling it this time. Murphy's got the disc after the stoppage uh, with the stool rising. And he keeps his cool and throws this high-release inside flick to the reset. Cochran fakes the hammer, which occupies all of the defenders. And Rogers takes advantage of this to shimmy around McHale and gets the disc in the end zone, knocking over Justin Ford. If we look again, we can see Rogers timing his cut, getting the shoulder in front, and McHale biting on the step to the reset, and then Corcoran with the lefty backhand, just putting the disc out to space. Ford sees the chance for a bid, but he pulls out before it gets dangerous. It's a savage way for the final to end for him, but elation for Ranala, winning the European final for the first time. Stay tuned for the next part where we're going to be looking at the trends and the takeaways. As always, to get that part first, sign up to our Patreon, join the community on Discord. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon. What has to be considered a metaphor? Rogers plows over Justin Ford to get the winning score. 15-14, the Rana Lad Tom Donix.